morning, everyone. It's a wonderful opportunity for me to be associated with SRM Institute of Higher Education and Research for this virtual workshop on caries risk assessment. As a part of this workshop, I'm going to discuss regarding one of the scales which is used for the assessment of the oral health related quality of life. And the scale is called as the child OIDP scale. To begin with, let us see what are the learning objectives or what can be expected from this presentation. So by the end of the presentation, we would be understanding the concept of oral health related quality of life, the difference we would be able to even summarize the different scales which are used for assessing the oral health related quality of life. And at the end of the session, we would be able to evaluate the oral health related quality of life of our patients with the help of the child OIDP scale. The flow of the presentation would be categorized under these headings. That is, we would be beginning with the definition of health, then a few concepts of oral health related quality of life, and then the different scales which are used for assessing the oral health related quality of life. And we would be going a little bit in detail about the child OIDP scale and a few conclusive remarks. So to begin with, the definition which we all are very familiar with, that is the definition of health, which has been given by WHO. WHO defines health as a state of complete physical, mental and social well-being and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. So this definition we all are very familiar with and this definition has broadened the aspect of health. That means to say we are not just looking at the presence or the absence of disease but we are trying to assess the patient perception also. Let us understand it a little more detailed. Health now is a multi-dimensional construct. That means we are not just looking at the presence or the absence of the signs or symptoms, but we are trying to look at the effect of these signs and symptoms on the physical functioning. We are trying to look that the effect of these signs and symptoms on emotional as well as the social well-being of the patient. That means to say we are trying to understand the perception of the patient regarding the health by doing something what we call as the patient assessment. So we are going to look at the health as an at a larger perspective beyond the clinical examination, beyond the investigations, beyond our perception to including the patient perception, the patient assessment. So this is what we call as the quality of life. And when it is related to oral health, we call it as the oral health related quality of life of our patients. The concept of oral health related quality of life is not a new one. It had been introduced in as old as in 1976 by Cohen and Jacko, where in their article they emphasized regarding the quality of their lives of their patients having oral problems. So it is from that time that the oral health related quality of life, the concept of this had come into picture. However, it has now taken up a, a different uh, magnitude to go ahead. When the Department of Health and Human Services has given a brief explanation of what is the oral health related quality of life. They say that oral health related quality of life reflects the people's comfort while they're eating, while they're sleeping, engaging in social interactions, their self-esteem, their satisfaction with respect to their oral health. That means it is not only that the patient is suffering from a particular disease, rather than that, it is the effect of that disease on his day-to-day -day activities or on his daily performances. That is what we are trying to assess through the oral health related quality of life. Now, why is it so important? Why are we talking so much about the oral health related quality of life? As clinicians, we should only be bothered about managing the disease treating the disease, but why are we bothered about the oral health related quality of life? It is because uh, it has been uh, explained very nicely in this article that is the face of the child, wherein they have emphasized the impact of oral health on overall health and the well-being of the patient as well as on the quality of life. It may be uh, the number of hours the child has been missed from the school due to dental problems, the diet that is getting modified of the child due to the dental problems. So these are all the factors which are having the effect on the quality of life of the child. 
so it's not only on the uh, a perspective of the patient but the this concept of oral health related quality of life is also finding its place in the research activities also it has shown that the study of diverse population including patient with uh, we are trying to study the patients with cancer we are trying to study the toddlers with early childhood caries or with patients with craniofacial anomalies so it's going to bring in a larger dimension to the researchers as well hence now we understand the importance of understanding the oral health related quality of life there are various scales by which we can assess the oral health related quality of life a few of them have been mentioned here that is child perception questionnaire the early childhood oral health impact score pediatric oral health related quality of life child oral impacts on daily performances that is the child oidp scale then the child oral health impact profile these are a few to mention let us see a few a, a brief details about these scales the child perception questionnaire this was one of the uh, oldest introduced uh, concept wherein they try to assess the quality of life of the children suffering from dental diseases uh since it was the uh, initially developed it requires a lot of refinement to be used in the present context and it includes the questionnaires of two age groups and this was not clear whether their two age groups the questionnaire has to be taken in the form of a longitudinal study or they can be used individually that is why uh, this scale is not being very commonly uh, used now then there is another scale that is the early childhood oral health impact scale now this scale is going to assess the uh, early childhood age group that is less than 5 years of age group uh, but the problem with these type of scales is there is a lot of proxy reporting that means the scale is usually um, uh, answered or where are is based on the uh, findings which are by the parents uh, that they are reporting the findings of their children so because the children may find it difficult to use these kind of scales so the parents report the findings of the children so that is why it's called as proxy reporting which may be sometimes a little questionable uh, then other scales are also present like pediatric oral health related quality of life this is comparatively uh, newly developed it also includes the preschoolers as well as school aged children it's an excellent tool for assessing the vulnerable population but it has not been tested for its psychometric properties extensively there is another scale that is the soho 5 that is the scale of oral health outcome of 5 year old children again for preschoolers for assessing the early childhood caries developed in uk but again this has not been tested extensively for its psychometric properties that is the validity and reliability of this scale is still questionable then the child oral health impact on daily performances that is the child oidp scale it assesses the negative impacts of the disease it is extensively used for research purposes it has undergone extensive psychometric assessments that means it has been tried and tested in many languages it has been converted to different languages validity and reliability of which has been tested extensively uh, uh, and also this is based on a scale which was usually originally developed for adults to assess the quality of life of the adult it has been modified to a large extent to accommodate the needs of the child i would be discussing what are these uh, modifications or differences as we go ahead with the presentation but this is a scale which can be considered as it has been tried and tested extensively then there is another scale which is very apt for our situation that is indian scenario because it has been developed validated in india by mathur sir uh, it is the oral health related early childhood quality of life so it has been developed and validated for the north indian population it's a very valid and a reliable tool for assessing the oral health related quality of life of the preschool children of north indian population it is has got and uh, it showed that early childhood caries causes a substantial impact impact on the functional and psychological well-being of not only the child but that of the family also this scale i'm sure uh, mathur sir would be going more detailed uh, in the next session um, however in the present clinical scenario this particular scale suits the best for the indian population 
So now uh, let us uh, go back and discuss a little bit regarding the child oral health related quality of life assessment using the child OIDP scale. So now, as I said previously, uh, this scale was modified to be used on among children. It was originally developed for adult to assess the physical, psychological, social activities which are getting compromised due to the poor oral health. So this was developed by Gerupong uh, uh, in 2004 and uh, it has got uh, different components. It has got a questionnaire which focuses, uh, which brings the concept of the uh, oral health uh, and uh, oral cavity uh, to the child as, in, as the child is answering these questions. Then there is a part one which has assesses the oral impacts on eight daily performances. So we'll be starting with assessing these impacts of the oral health on eight daily performances. These performances are eating food, speaking clearly and cleaning the mouth, relaxation, which includes sleeping, maintaining usual emotional state without being irritable, smiling and laughing, showing teeth without embarrassment, carrying out schoolwork, that is going to school, learning in the class, doing homework without any disturbance due to dental problems and contact with people, that is maybe going to a friend's house. So these are certain daily performances or daily activities that we perform. And how is our oral health having an impact on these daily performances is what they are going to assess in the part one of this particular scale. As I said initially, there has been certain modifications done in the scale to accommodate the needs of the child as the child will have to answer the scale. So uh, they brought in the concept of the pictorial representation. As we can see in these pictures, uh, the image uh, is shows the eating. Uh, how is the impact of the oral health on one of the uh, daily performance that is the eating of a food such as say ice cream. So uh, does it have a positive performance or is the child having any discomfort while doing this activity. So some similar kind of pictures has been brought up in the scale so as to uh, make it easier for the child to understand and interpret and answer the rest questions. Uh, so that is all a part of part one wherein we are trying to assess the impact of the oral health on the daily performance. Once that is evaluated then we would be going to the part two of the scale, which includes calculation of the frequency score. So for each daily uh, performance, we would be calculating the frequency score. Let's take, for example, eating. What is the effect of the oral health on the eating practices? Like uh, this has been given on a uh, Likert scale 3 from 1 to 3. Original uh, scale had Likert scale 5 but it has been reduced for child from one to three as there was a lot of bias because of the close responses which were seen. So the three, uh, the scale of three is one is being the effect on the daily performance is being present uh, once or twice a month or it is present uh, score two when it is given, it says that it is present three or more times a month or once or twice a week. And if a score of three is given, that means to say that the effect of the oral disease is having an impact on the daily performance for three or more times a week. Similarly, we will calculate the severity score also uh, on a three point uh, Likert scale. That is the one is little effect, two is moderate effect and three is severe effect. So first we would understand that oral health is assessing, is affecting which part of the uh, daily performance. And then in the part two, we will try to assess how is the frequency of that particular impact and how is the severity of that particular impact. Then how are we going to calculate our scores? So each performance score will be calculated by multiplying the frequency score with that of the severity score. And the OIDP score, score will be given in the form of a percentage, which is calculated by some of the eight scores, performance scores, which we obtained from the above formula by divided by square 72 into 100. So this is going to give us the, um, uh, the percentage of the child OIDP score. How the larger the percentage, the more is the impact of the oral disease on the daily activities. The lesser the percentage, the less is the impact. So 
What are the conclusions is that we can draw from the scale is that it focuses on the provision of health services to the patients as perceived by them that is based on their requirements. So it is going to have a provision for dental care to children should address not just the clinical needs, but for the to give attention to their social dental needs, taking into consideration their perceptions in the terms of impact on the oral conditions on their daily life. It is also will help us to involve the patient in the treatment planning. The patient or the parent will be aware of the need of that particular treatment. So if we assess this quality of life, then we will be able to give the patient the treatment that the ch parent, child requires or which is going to improve his or her quality of life. It's also going to help us in uh, making the patient have a positive attitude towards the dental treatment in future. So these are the certain conclusive outcome re uh, remarks of the performing this particular OIDP scale to assess the oral health related quality of life. So with that, I conclude my uh, session. Uh, I am I I would like to convey my gratitude to uh, uh, Dr. Vignesh and Dr. Muthu sir for giving us an opportunity for being able to collaborate uh, for this uh, caries risk assessment and also uh, collaborate and contribute on for this virtual uh, workshop. Um, extremely thankful to all of you. Thank you.